Let me ask you something. What am I to you people? I was the first one to climb the tower. I was the greatest fisherman in battle. And I pioneered a civilization of mutual understanding among the people of the tower. But you probably know me best by a different word. The word King. Bro, Jihad is so cool! If you're a fan of Tower of God, most likely you know this, but Jihad is the king of the tower. Meaning that Jihad is the big boy of Tower of God. Whether you look at him as just the king and he's not a good guy or a bad guy, or whether you look at him as the primary antagonist, which he most likely is considered to be. Jihad is a badass. He was the first one to climb, and there is so much lore and history surrounding the number three ranker of the tower. So today, we're going to be breaking down Jihad, his history, even his future. So let's get into it. I'll keep it brief, but this channel is all about Tower of God, and we briefly branch off into other anime and comics and stuff. So if you want to support us, consider subscribing and liking this video because it would be pretty cool. So yeah, Jihad is the most famous individual in this tower. He is currently ranked number three, which you might be like, wait, what, what are you talking about? Number three, who's above Jihad, right? So when he first climbed the tower and for a very long time, he actually was number one. The only people below him were the 10 great family heads and etc. etc. But then Enryu entered the tower and then surpassed him. And then Pentamonum entered the tower and surpassed him. And it's kind of unknown if these people really are 100% stronger than Jihad. It's implied. But Jihad went inactive after climbing the tower, which we'll get into. But that's why he's at number three for the most part. So going all the way back to the beginning, Jihad and his great warriors entered the tower and decided, you know what? We're going to explore this thing. We're going to we're we're gonna basically just go on an adventure, right? Now, history tells us that he went on this adventure with 10 companions, but really it was 12 companions. So it was Jihad, the 10 family heads, you know, Arie, Ari, Kun, you know, all those people. And then also Arlen and V, which we'll get into more later, of course. But these 13 BFFs essentially are partners and companions. They climbed the tower. And as they continued to climb, eventually Jihad started to establish his kingdom. And at the top, he became king. You know, he started making contracts with the administrators. In fact, it's said that he was the very first person to make a contract with an administrator. And eventually, he obtained immortality. You know, his friends gained immortality for the most, or most of them did for the most part. And then he became king. He became the top dog. And once he reached the 134th floor, we don't know why exactly it's rumored, but he said, I'm done. And he stopped climbing. He sealed the, the, the door to the 135th floor and said, you know what, I'm just going to be king. I'm done climbing. So there's a lot of theories about why that is. Maybe Jihad was just done with it. Maybe everything that went down afterward made him want to stop climbing. Maybe he didn't want to know. Maybe he was too scared to keep climbing. Like, who knows? There's a lot of theories, but it's really fascinating. So Jihad sealed this key and broke it into a bunch of pieces. 13 of these pieces are found within the 13 month series weapons. So if you gather them all, that's a part of the key. And then the other parts of the key were made into rings and given to the princes of the red light district. So Wang Nan and Karaka have these rings. But yeah, I would love to see just the climbing of the tower as its own side story or a video game or something. I think that would be so cool. It's known as the Great Journey. I've also heard it known as the Age of Ascension. So I think that'd be so dope because you can guarantee that these 13 companions went on some adventures. A lot of the other history relating to Jihad that we know about connect directly with Arlen and V. So during their climb, Jihad fell madly in love with Arlen, okay? She must have been just, it's implied that she was a very sweet individual and that she was beautiful and Jihad was just head over heels for her. And, but there was some bad news because Bomb's daddy was 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 in her good graces let's just say because she was in love with v and so they had a baby this bomb blah 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 and jihad he even proposed to her earlier okay i'm getting ahead of myself okay so he proposed to her she said no he wasn't very happy arlen and v ran away a war happened and stuff went down. The age of Genesis, right? People were pitted against one another. The great families were involved and all these people. 
and eventually Arlen had a child named Bomb. There we go, I'm not getting ahead of myself this time. And then Jihad was like, nah, uh And apparently, he murdered Bomb right in front of Arlen in a brutal way. Kinda messed up. Jihad's not a great guy. The thing about it though is that we don't have the whole story. This is all directly from Arlen's perspective, and while you can assume she's Bomb's mother, we can trust her, we don't know 100%, right? That's just. It's just what we know from Arlen. So the war kept continuing further and further, and this is the exact same war that the Hidden Grove team took part in. We learn about the Hidden Grove team in Season 3. Doan, Cha, uh, the guy with the spear and the mask, you know, all those people, and, and then of course Kel Halam and Kunhein Luck. They were all involved, and they were siding with the Arlen and V Squad. And then Kel Halam tried to take down Jihad, and we see that flashback. Uh, Kunhein Luck betrays them, and that quote that I read at the beginning is what Jihad tells Kel Halam. It's so freaking cool, but Jihad's the worst. He, he's, he's the worst. So yeah, after that, Jihad was like, I'm done. I'm done ruling, bro. I'm just gonna chill at, you know, on the 135th, 34th floor, and that's sort of where the Three Lords system comes into play. And if you don't know what the Three Lords is all about, you can check that out by clicking the card here. I made a whole video going into how that system works, but a brief summary is essentially there are three rulers that take turns ruling the tower for Jihad. That's that's basically it. Okay, it's not just basically it. There's the really interesting rulers and lords. You should definitely check out that video. Also, sometime way later on, Pentaminum entered the tower, slaughtered Jihad's you know, squad, some of his rankers, and he encountered Jihad and then left. We don't know what went down, we don't know what conversation they had or what was going on, but I also kind of theorized about that in my video about Pentaminum, which you can check out by clicking the card. But overall, that is most of the past history relating to Jihad that we know about. Obviously, there's a lot more that went down, but that's sort of the basic rundown of his past. But in the present, Jihad has been active too, starting from the hidden floor arc of Tower of God, Jihad was like, oh, Bomb is alive. Okay. And then he became active once again, issuing out three orders and essentially just trying to kill Bomb, wipe out the Popadao family because they're kind of betraying him and there, there's a lot going down, but the gist of it is now Jihad is back in the game. Jihad is back and ready to fight, which is just crazy. Jihad is trying to eliminate Fug, eliminate the Pope Dao family, eliminate the people on the train, which so that so that bomb can get killed and all that. That was at the end of season two, but even in season three, he is manipulating a lot of the events that are happening. He's the one that ordered Kalavan and ordered um, yes Racha and all. You know, obviously he's connected to all the other people in the army, and he he's active once again which is wild. That means that out of the active rankers in the tower, Jihad is the highest ranked, because the one below him is Yurik, who is active, but the two above him are inactive. We have no idea where they are. You know, Pentaminen was never seen again. Enryu was never seen again, so it's pretty wild. So overall, that is the plot relating to Jihad, the history and the presence. So right now, he's really just trying to, again, complete those goals. The reason that he's trying to eliminate the Pope Dao family is because they're kind of being anti-Jihad right now, which is pretty wild. Uh, Pope Dao Gustang gave the treasure seeking or the treasure hunting stingray to Rachel, and she ended up retrieving Jihad's bracelet, which was hidden on the hidden floor, which is genius, because Jihad was like, hey, no rankers can come here, so I'm just gonna leave it here, but Gustang, man, that boy is big brain. So ultimately, I'd like to see where the story is gonna go going forward, like, will Jihad himself try to intervene a after the whole thing at the nest goes down? You know, I mean, I'm sure we'll find out more and more as we read, but Jihad, he's finally, like, in the story now, like, him, himself, so it's pretty insane and I'm so excited. Talking about his personality, Jihad is kind of cruel. You know, he isn't without emotions. He fell in love with Arlen and regarded her so highly. Like he he didn't just love her in like a little way. Like he truly did love her. But at the same time, his cruel nature came out when he literally butchered a, you know, bomb in front of her. And you could argue that maybe the story is twisted, but from what we know, that makes Jihad out to be kind of not a great guy. He's known for being cold and ruthless. Um, Kalavan described him once as only seeing the other 10 family heads as equal to himself, and everybody else he couldn't really care about. You know, if he has to sacrifice some of his subjects, whatever, bro. He's the king of the tower and he knows it, right? But the interesting thing is he wasn't always like this. The data version of Jihad seemed to sort of just accept that he was gonna be king and he couldn't, like that was fate, he couldn't really control it. 
and that version of himself seems to want to go on more adventures. Like, the past version of Jihad who entered the tower wasn't going into it like, I must be king. Like, no, he was someone who just wanted to go on an adventure and explore, and eventually that was sort of brought onto him, and then he accepted it and embraced it, you know, and then that's when he started to change. Because even the God of Guardians on the Hell Train, when he's talking to Bomb, he, he's like, you remind me a lot of Jihad before he basically became king and all that stuff, because Jihad wanted to use power to help people as well, which just seems wild when talking about present day Jihad. The current Jihad is calm, he's calculated, you know, he he's the perfect king, honestly. He's the person who first entered. He's the perfect king for him and his loyal, like, subordinates directly, but I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't want him to be king because you know he does not care about the smaller folk. Assuming I would be a smaller folk. I mean, I probably would be. And so the people in the tower worship and revere Jihad as their omniscient and omnip omnipotent. Omnipotent. Omnip blah, 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 blah. They worship him as their omnipotent and omniscient king. Basically, god of the tower, right? Tower of God could very well be referring to Jihad, because he pretty much is, at this point, the god of the tower. Jihad's symbol is the little red uh, three eyes, essentially. Three eyes and three dots, in that you can see the design on the screen here. And what's really interesting about this symbol is not only is it seen in a lot of places in the tower, of course, it's his symbol, everyone knows about it, the rings and everything, but we can also see this symbol in Bomb's cave, which is like, well, the thing about it is it isn't a, the exact symbol, but it's the three eyes and the three dots, but there's also a cross. And this isn't really referenced again. It's sort of just shown and it's like, what, what, why would there be that symbol outside the tower, right? So there's something going on there. Maybe Arlen took on that symbol and added a cross to like show her rebellion or something and maybe she inscribed it in the cake like who knows but it's really interesting so now we're gonna get into the final thing here which is jihad's powers and abilities and maybe i'll make a whole video about this so i'm kind of gonna be a little bit brief but jihad is he's a monster bro he's a monster just by talking and hearing about Arie han's words the leader of the Arie family which is the strongest of the 10 great families Arie han fought jihad 10 times and lost all 10 times. Arie Han, a master swordsman, lost all 10 times to Jihad and so he became his servant. That alone tells you enough. Jihad was a master fisherman just based on the fact that he is a fisherman and he's so high ranked. It can be implied that Jihad is the greatest fisherman in the tower and he is a master with a needle. And, but the thing about it too, is that even though he's a fisherman, he could take on any other position, obviously except from like guide, right? And he was a master at those positions as well. So Jihad could be a spear bearer. He could be a wave controller. He could be a scout if you wanted. But obviously, fisherman suits him best. Also, just showcasing how powerful he is. His blood. When he shares his blood with his fake daughters, right? His adopted daughters. They became. They become so strong. You know, in Dorsey's physical strength and Mashini and the Lopobia twins, like they are such monsters, just because they have some of his blood. Like, imagine! He's able to predict the future to some extent with fate and everything, as he show, as as was shown with the whole uh, Kunhain Luck thing and Kel Halam and the Hidden Grove team. Uh, he has these red horns, that just like Wong Nan, but he's able to, like, expand them and they're able to grow and it, like, makes him look like a demon and there's, like, all this stuff that happens. He's able to use spells, he's immortal, he's invulnerable, um, he's, he's a master at hand-to-hand -hand combat, even his data version and everything, like, that's the rundown, okay? Again, I'll probably make a whole separate video, so subscribe if you wanna see more details on his abilities. He owns a couple of swords. Like, this guy is an absolute beast of a character, and there's no question as to why he's ranked number three. So yeah, that is the lore video on Jihad, the king of the tower. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Did I miss anything? Obviously, again, I can't cover everything in these lore videos, but that just goes to show you how amazing Jihad is at everything except his personality, because, I mean, come on, Jihad is kind of the worst. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in my next Tower of God lore video. Take care!